I think this is really when Metro starts to illustrate that he is more than a quote unquote beat maker. Yeah, exactly. He's a producer. And I've heard a lot of producers mm -hmm. talk about the He's difference. He's an orchestrator of trap music, like, like literally. Precisely. Welcome back, everybody, to the Soul Serum Podcast. I am your clutching glizzies with the fellas host, Clay Bonine. <laughs> I am joined by my told that boy put his cape on co-host, Tanner Mavis. I'm glad you're clutching glizzies, not me. <laughs> I almost made yours clutching glizzies, but I was like, that's fucked up. I gotta, I gotta make it my own. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. If you're here... I'm going to just go ahead and assume that you have listened to the latest Metro Boomin project, Heroes and Villains, and I want to talk about how did we get here. So today, Tanner and I are going to go through Metro Boomin's discography. We're going to talk about each project, what it did for him in his career, and how we eventually got here to Heroes and Villains. Uh, let me give a little context before we get into this here. So Metro Boomin, born Leland Wayne. That's a country-ass name if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Leland Wayne, he's originally from St. Louis, and he started making beats when he was 13. His mom bought him a laptop and a copy of Fruity Loops. Shout out to Mama Boomin for Real that Midwest one. kid, that's fire. Real Midwest kid. He eventually moved to Atlanta to attend Morehouse College, uh, but before that, he had already been online networking with a lot of artists in Atlanta, and he initially started working with the Brick Squad artist Tay Don, who, look, and if you're listening to that podcast, this podcast, you know who Tay Don is. That's you, that's you, crazy. You're crazy. You're yeah. crazy for that one. But that eventually led him to working with Gucci Mane, which then eventually led him to working with Future and then Migos and Young Thug. And yep. we know how it all spiraled out from yeah. there. I like I like um, visually remember like my freshman year of college. It was like 20, 2014 or mm -hmm. something like that. Fall winter of 2014 being in the parking lot like smoking and listening to uh, Chanel Vintage by uh, Young Thug and Future and hearing that first uh, that first Metro Boom and uh, producer tag. Yes. And I, I, I vividly remember it, like, which is the crazy thing. Yes. Like, I, feel, I feel like that's when I first like uh, started recognizing that there was someone behind making these beats. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like there, there was a brand behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Metro actually, which I'm sure we'll discuss as we go, I think kind of pioneers that. 100%. For people, not that people didn't pay attention to producers. There's obviously like your your Jay Dillas, your Mad Libs. You know, there's all these heralded, yeah. but specifically in trap music, I feel like yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, since he first moved to Atlanta and started working with these artists, he has a multitude of critically acclaimed projects. Possibly the most iconic producer tag of all time. Go watch our video about that. Yeah. Um, and so let's just go through. Let's start from the beginning. We're going to give a little five minute review, you know, a little quickie review of these projects until we talk about heroes and villains. I have this wrong. This is actually 2014. You were right on that. Um, so let's start with 2014. He released his first project under his own artist name. It's 19 and Boomin. Um, we can go over this pretty quickly because it was still when Metro was wanting to be the rapper producer combo. So mm -hmm. he's rapping on pretty much all of these songs on 19 and Boomin. Nothing super memorable for me off that except for Chanel. There's a, there's, a, there's a song. It's a second song. I think it's with, I think it's with OJ the Juice Man. That's super hard. Yeah. That yeah. I was that I was listening to the other day. But OJ the Juice Man, keep it one hundred. <laughs> Shout out Juice Man. Um, yeah, I feel like though, like to me, when I went back and like listened to some of the songs off of Nineteen and Boomin', it just it didn't really do anything for me as a music fan now, except it kind of reminded me of that era of Atlanta music. It's yeah. it's right before the Young Thug Future yeah. like explosion. Like yeah. Young Thug and Future are obviously already popping at that time in Atlanta, but aren't, in Atlanta, yeah, aren't exactly. popping like yeah. 
you know, nationally, yeah. globally. So like the roof was about to be blown off. Like, yes. In 2015, yes. really, was when it all but th- it was like the, the precursor yeah. to all of that happening. And I think at this point, too, in Metro's career, like I know him from Gucci beats like Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. So many Metro yeah. beats, so many crazy Metro beats on these old Gucci tapes. And that's kind of what I think about. When I think about the 2014, 19 and booming. Um, and then, as you said, 2015 is kind of when the roof blew off. Yeah. We get. Uh, well, I will say this. Uh, like, I feel like the Migos moment was kind of happening before 2015. Yeah, it was like with, 2013. With No Label 2 and mm-hmm. the Versace. Versace was like 2013, right? Yeah. With yeah. Drake. Mm-hmm. Like that, that, that was a big moment, but Metro wasn't really, he was in the scene, but I don't think he was producing on those, yeah, on those yeah. records. A- at least he wasn't producing the hits for them. Yeah. I think Zaytoven had a lot more of like the Facts. Migos hits then. Which yeah. Shout out Facts. Zaytoven. We could do a video about him too. Yeah. Um, but then in 2015, like you said, uh, the roof blows off. He executive produces Dirty Sprite 2. He produces God. pretty much everything on What a Time to Be Alive with yeah. Drake and Future. That was huge. Two, two of two. <sighs> My, my little heart yeah. flutters when I think we about all, like listening to those two projects for the first time. Man, people always talk about like 2016 and 2017 SoundCloud, but like 2015 Atlanta specifically was man. insane. Man, we might like Thug, man, Barter we might have to Six. Do a video about that. Yeah, like Barter Six, Barter Six, DS2. Uh, what a time to be alive. I know it's not Atlanta, but it's Atlanta adjacent. Rodeo comes yeah, out facts. that year too. Yeah. Like. I mean, T.I. narrates it. Let's call it Atlanta. It, it definitely is point, Atlanta. You know? like. um, yeah, that 2015 Atlanta is like some of my fondest music memories. Rich Homie Kwan. Like, Golly, Rich Homie <laughs> Kwan, too. But so let's go to the next year, 2016. This is when we really start to get the Metro that we know mm-hmm. today. Savage Mode. The yeah. collaborative tape between 21 Savage and Metro Boomin. And I think not only does this really introduce 21 in a larger scale, because 21 had had some hits before that, but I think, you know. Yeah, it was X, real street shit. Yeah. Like the, um, we were like the X, Slaughter King mixtape was, was, mm-hmm. was bubbling. It was Red Ops. Red Ops, yeah. yeah. Dirty K, things yeah. like that. But this Air it is, out. this is like broadcast Metro yeah. Boomin stamped because this is also post Father Stretch My Hands. Oh yeah, and that's damn, the stock. I about the that stock too. went up yeah. after that. The Metro the stock, stock went crazy. Went up. So we get Savage Mode in 2016, uh, and while this introduces 21 onto the scene, I think this is really when Metro starts to illustrate that he is more than a quote-unquote beat maker. Yeah, exactly. He's a producer, and I've heard a lot of producers mm-hmm. talk about the He's difference. He's an orchestrator of trap music, like, like literally. Precisely. <laughs> a conductor. <laughs> yeah. Metro just in the studio. It's so with crazy us stick. talking about this in 2017, and then... We're going to talk about it later, obviously, with the recent project. But, like, the recent project as far as <sighs> conducting trap music is actually crazy. I n- do. I know. Well, okay. All right. Let's. <laughs> so um, let's just get a quick, like, tell me, what do you remember about Savage Mode when it released in 2016? Like, how do you Man, feel about bro, that project? I was just, like, so hyped because I was, I, was, I was a big 21 Savage fan. I knew... Mm-hmm. I knew once I got word that him and 21 were making a whole project together, I was like, oh, it's over with. Like, yes. It's going to be. It, and as soon as it dropped, like, yes. I remember picking up one of my friends from uh, his apartment or something. And I was like, bro, this should just drop. Like, let's, let's listen to it. And we turned it on. And he didn't even know who 21 Savage was. And we were just banging out in the car. Like, it, we were, like, fucking going crazy over uh, No Heart. Like, <sighs> as soon as that No Heart cut came on, like, I was like, oh, my God, it's over with. Like I, and then, and then the my ex song was like this like the party song of, of oh college. My God, dude. I feel like I like, have I have so many memories of summer 2016 yeah. with that song yeah. playing in the background. Yeah. dude. it was um, just I feel like the tape as a whole was just a soundtrack to the times, like for real. And I think you know Metro talks about this in an interview, but. 21 at that time was doing something different after the atlanta like 2015 blow up happens everybody tries to do that sound and 21 savage does not he's he's just he's just talking on the beat he's just he's just whispering on the beat and 
and it it really became polarizing. It yeah. really stood out. Um, I have very fond memories of that project. But let's go to the next year, 2017. Perfect timing. Yeah. Now, kind of kind of a forgotten about project. Now, I would feel like in 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 all of uh, Metro's discography, I would agree. It's a pleasant like reminder. You go back, like, oh, I forgot Metro did this. Like, so I, I like this. In preparation for this, I was listening to some today on my way to work, and like these songs. Well, I'm not a huge Nav fan, as as has been illustrated <laughs> before, but these songs have aged like. Like well, yeah. Like they sound good it's still. A, it, I was so I was like, oh shit! It, I think it I does like sound this more now. Honestly. Like the patterns and stuff, sound drum patterns and stuff, like sounds so 2017. I feel yes, like yes, like totally. I mean, if you if these songs came out now, it'd sound weird. But listening to it in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, this kind of goes. This yeah. project goes. The song with Cardi is fire. Yeah, uh, what is it? Minute. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, minute and with offset too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fire one. Um, I don't have any other comments about this. I have a lot more comments about the other projects. Yeah. Do you? You keep moving. About no, no. Okay. I, I remember. I remember at the time it kind of just uh, came and went for me, and I specifically was just listening to the Cardi part. Cause yeah, because like we were twenty seventeen was like big. Like the Cardi phase just started yes. going crazy. So yeah. I was listening to everything that he put out. You know, hundred percent. Still to this day, I do. But you know. So later twenty seventeen, we get. I think. So I, I said, you know, Savage Mode uh, kind of illustrates Metro as a producer rather than a beat maker. But then we get Without Warning in 2017. And now it's starting to feel more like an idea, a yeah. concept, um, a whole a whole circle, if, you, if that makes sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Because while there isn't like a concept in the sense of, you know, this album is a story about a boy who, da, 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 you know, like <laughs> there is this scary, yeah. spooky, yeah. almost like supernatural theme throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I listen to it around Halloween every year. Like that, that is the Facts. type of album that without warning, which yeah. I guess I should say is the collaborative project 21 Savage offset and metro booming yeah um crazy project i feel like i feel like working with 21 had to like the all the like the spooky murder like <laughs> horror core type of vibes yes, yes, like yes. really rubbed off in in the, the session and th like that type of that probably brought like the best ideas out production wise for mm -hmm. metro and he was just like i'm running with this like this is my thing the production on this uh, project and like I said, I, I mean I'm not exaggerating. I listen to it around Halloween every year because it really feels like that time of year for me. The production is impressive yeah. on this project. Metro is dipping into sounds that aren't anywhere else in his catalog. Uh, Ric Flair Drip, by the way, has yeah. over a billion that's streams so on Spotify. Crazy. That's Man. that that's one of the biggest dun, songs of the dun, decade. Dun, for dun, real. Dun, dun. Which, oh, that was eight oh another another huge party song that was oh, that was played God. everywhere. Yes, yeah. And that's what's cool about Metro Boomin becoming this producer, this orchestrator. I really like that term. I want to keep calling him that. Yeah. About when he becomes this orchestrator is that he is making the music a bit more palatable and accessible for non- Hip hop yeah. fans, hip hop heads. For so sure. you get a Ric Flair drip, and it blows everything out of the water because, like, he can take Offset, who I guess they've had bad and bougie at this point, but still, I wouldn't say is like a mainstream artist in a way. And to get a billion streams, like, and have it, you know, blow up like that. We haven't even talked about bad and bougie yet. Fuck. You know what? We yeah, we, we skipped over bad and booty. Okay, that's the thing, man. When I was doing prep for this, I'm like going through his, just, his credits. Too much. I'm like, holy shit, this guy has every song. Yeah. Like every song. Congratulations, Post Malone. Yeah. He has credits. Metro Boomin has credits on a Coldplay song that came out this year. What? I, I was like skipping through the track. I'm like, where is he at? And these fucking drums come in. And, and you I'm hear like, it. Oh, that's yeah. the Metro Boomin <laughs> effect right there. Bad and bougie. Let's just talk about it very yeah, quickly. That was like the peak, I feel like. Not that he, not that like he would ever fizzle out after, which he hasn't, obviously, but, but like. That I don't, I don't think I don't think it gets any bigger than that. No, 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 no. Talk about like what I was just talking about, like kind of making things more accessible and palatable for non hip hop fans. Bad and bougie is like the 
shining example yeah. of that. I feel like that song might be like the pinnacle of trap music, like as a whole, like, along with probably a couple other songs too. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you like got Atlanta. You know what I you mean? You got to put it up. It's there. the peak of Migos. If we were gonna make a list, Bad and Bougie is very high on yeah. that list for sure. Like the Migos are debatably like the biggest like rap group. Bigger Ever than, bigger than the Beatles? Yeah, <laughs> Loki. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my favorite fucking argument. Be like, you know, Migos better than the Beatles, and just like close Twitter, <laughs> Migos better than the Beatles. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's keep it pushing here. Twenty seventeen again. He drops another project with Big Sean, Double or Nothing. Didn't listen to it then. Haven't listened to it since. Yeah, I have no comments on yeah, it. Yeah, I have no comments either. Okay. I, I, I didn't really listen to it. I can't click on it. I don't even know if I if I know a song off of there. To be honest, it might have not been on my radar. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Nope. I, don't I don't know any of these. That's songs. crazy. <laughs> not, not big. But this one has fucking a hundred million plays though. So you uh, know. go legend. That was a song with Travis. I do remember hearing that snippet, and I was like waiting for that song to come out. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure the big Sean fans That's, everywhere loved this yeah. one. Um, okay, but let's move on because this next album comes out 2018. Not all heroes wear capes. Which at the time, we don't know that it's going to be like the beginning of a saga. No, 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 no. We don't. We don't. And that's, oh, man, I'm so happy you brought that up, too. Uh, Not All Heroes Wear Capes is, I think, the first time where we fully get Metro standing at the conductor fucking stand and waving the wand around and and orchestrating this whole thing because this is a project where you play it just like heroes and villains you play it all the way through and all these tracks transition and weave in between each other and again have this constant through line this constant feel it's a little dark it's a little spacey um the the three I, i love this album so much i was listening to it again today the the um run of I mean, really the whole album, but 10 Freaky Girls, Up to Something, Only One, Lesbian. Play that shit at my funeral. (laughs) Play those four songs in a row. I love that run. I love this album. It's beautiful. It's not like... It's not like Metro Boomin is making a bunch of trap beats. I think we should be clear about that. It's not like he's making, you know, he's just an FL studio just putting the shit in the grid. Yeah. There are real instruments being played that are adding to the atmosphere. I mean, it is, there's a lot of musicality in this album, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love it. I wish more artists would do stuff like this. That's why I love all the Pierre Bourne stuff, too, is like maybe it's not as, quote unquote, musical as not all heroes wear capes, but to have those seamless transitions and they all interweave with each other. I I just to me, I I love it. I love it. How do you feel about not? Um, I'm not going to be honest. I need to listen to it again. It's been a while since I've I've like actually listened to it. It's been four yeah. years, which is crazy to think about. Dude, that, when I saw like, that it was I thought it was 2020. I did, too. I was I like, swear. I was like, man, it's been four years Dude, since this drop. I like, went back on like my Instagram story archive and I was like, damn, I mean, I did listen to it on the day it came out. But I'm like, I don't I swear it felt like 2020. Yeah, like, it did not feel it's like so 2018. crazy. I just remember Space Cadet being like the big record off what of off of it. which came back as like a tiktok sound yeah. somewhat recently which I, I was like i thought was kind of funny but um yeah i love this album and I, come to think of it like i have a couple of vinyls and they're all like albums that i really love and i think i want to add this one so if anybody That'll wants to sell me a not all heroes wear capes vinyl and don't fucking tax me on it i will i will pay good money for it um so okay that's in 2018. We don't get another Metro project until 2020, but he is not lacking in this time, though. <laughs> this is when I feel Metro Boomin is now like solidified himself, and he's like, I can work with whoever I want, yeah. whenever, wherever. Um, but he, even Morgan Freeman. He got fucking Morgan that Freeman. Was, that was that was like when I heard Morgan Freeman on it, I was like, okay. So let's let's talk about it. Metro, Savage you, you're, you're Mode crazy Two. For that. Savage Mode Two comes out, I believe, October of 2020. Right? We talked about it. Yeah, October second, 2020. Man, 
this album, I, I can't say that I have come back to it as much as I have Not All Heroes Wear Capes. But again, another album where it's being orchestrated. Songs are transitioning back to back on each other. Um, and I mean, there are some there are some real bangers. on. I this, think this, this album song. has more hits than the first Savage Mode. I would agree with that because the, the first Savage Mode still feels really like dark and scary and like yeah. is 21 savage going to shoot me but yeah. where this one is more like 21 savage who by the way from uh savage mode one to savage mode two has had an explosive yeah. career after that but now 21 savage on this album is more like um i'm gonna shoot you but also gonna seduce your girl i'm <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you with the double whammy real yeah. quick i'm gonna take your girl and I'm gonna shoot you. I'll say this: Top Savage Mode One is probably more top heavy with like with my ex mm -hmm. and no heart. Yeah, but I think this has more hits and a little bit more quality as well. I would say personally, I think Savage Mode One is definitely more raw in 100%, in the production yeah. and in the rapping rather than this, which is very polished. Yeah. We still get some grimy records on this, but it, yeah. it is it is. Polished, he's a seasoned though. he's seasoned vet at this point. Yes. He got fucking Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Like it's, listening it's to this for the first time and you don't you don't have a moment where you're like is that Morgan Freeman? No, you know. It's like holy shit. He's got Morgan <laughs> Freeman narrating right now. Which if that is not a testament to Metro Boomin's like artistry and uh his credibility in the yeah. industry so you don't you don't just get Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I wonder if Morgan Freeman is like actually like like listening to like Twenty One Savage like in his free time. <laughs> I could see it for real. Like I, I don't think Morgan Freeman is t is wanted to hop on a project that he's not like passionate about doing. That is a valid point. I don't I don't think they probably just sent Morgan Freeman a script in in a bag and he's yeah. probably just like sure I'll just do it whatever. Like he probably understood yeah. the assignment. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I love this one. Uh, I feel like Metro just it's just like it's a movie in your head through your ears. Like like it it's it's a it's such a I don't know, when you're when you're going through the, the track list and, and like you said, the transitions and everything, it just yeah. it feels like you just close your eyes and you're just, you're watching it your imagination is creating a movie through it, it is, the, the music and the orchestration and yeah, I don't know, just the whole environment that he's creating with, with like and I feel like audio. Every project gets closer to that to what you're describing the yeah. cinematic quality of the album every from savage mode to uh perfect timing to without warning when i think it really starts not all heroes wear capes savage mode too he's getting better and better yeah. and better at creating this more audio cinematic yeah. story yeah. you know and morgan freeman who, who better than than to add more to it to, to have him narrate your story and here's the thing too let's get into it 2022 heroes and villains has just released and who is there to narrate us through once again morgan motherfucking freeman man. <laughs> that so this this is heroes and villains this one just came out um I knew, I mean, I was already excited for it. I knew that I was going to like it before I listened to it. Um, but this one, I think, in comparison to Not All Heroes Wear Capes in Savage Mode 2, has a lot more ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. right? Like, we get Superhero, which I feel like the second song and On Time, the first and second song, are a really high point. We kind of drop down too many nights, raindrops. We come back up for Umbrella and Trance and go back down for Around Me. And then around me to Metro Spider, Morgan Freeman comes in and has that note about there being two halves yeah. and two sides. And you're like, oh, shit, we're going from the hero to the villain side. <laughs> and it fucking takes a turn. Yep. It gets dark. I can't save you. <laughs> Crazy. I, so one thing I wonder about with this is like how much is Metro telling future? Like, is he telling future? OK, the line is I can't save you go for it yeah or is he going i want you to say i can't save you i can't save you i can't save you i can't save no like i want to know how much direction yeah. metro is giving because i think there has to be some sort of um balance there because mm -hmm. i don't think you could tell future i want you to say i can't save you i can't save you i can't save you i feel like metro has to be like here's the mood here's the beat here's the title of the song 
go. And Future's yeah. like, I'm the greatest. I'll do it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, I love this album, though, man. How did how do you feel about it? We've we've been sitting with it for a few days now. Yeah. How, how are you feeling? Um, I've listened through it like twice. I keep, I feel like I keep going back to like certain tracks, not the whole thing. I agree. Um, I think my favorite, some of my favorite highlights are with Don Tolliver. Like oh, I think Don man. Tolliver's vocals fit this album like yes. perfectly. Yes. Especially uh, um, Around Me is yes. one of my favorite cuts. Yes. Um, I think the radio record is a song with The Weeknd. I think the hook Creeping. is one of the best hooks mm -hmm. that The Weeknd has put out. Um, super, super fucking catchy. I, I, that's what I was going to say. That hook is also very catchy, very easy to learn. I yeah, felt like I very, knew it yeah, knew after it right the first listen. Um, and I agree with you. Like, I feel like Metro Boomin probably heard Don Tolliver's voice for the first time and started like rubbing his oh, hands yeah. together. He was like, I can't wait to get this motherfucker on a track. Yeah. Like, I, I agree with you. The Don Tolliver records are standouts. Um, Umbrella, yeah, umbrellas. Hard. Metro Spider, Walk 'em Down. Walk I love em Walk 'em too. Down because there's almost two sides to that song. We get the 21 Savage where he's talking about walking him down, yeah, and then the Mustafa part where it's kind of this introspective, like, what are we doing? Is the violence worth it? Like, my yeah. friend just died. You know, we get both sides, and I, obviously, I think a big theme in this album is duality and living in these two different yeah. worlds or having these two different and that's sides. like that's just like a, a metaphor for trap music as a whole mm -hmm. you know it's just like i feel like a lot of kids are looking up to like uh you know trap rappers trap stars they've like clearly all these rappers on this album are the leaders of the the, the new age of trap sound and rap sound as a whole really yeah and you know there's certain elements and uh themes within this world and this music that you know uh, there's there's a, there's ne there's negativity to it, but mm -hmm. a lot of it is they're 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 flipping a negative to a positive, right? Really. You right. know what I mean? And that's the duality of you know where these artists come from, for real, in the environment that they've grown up in. It's it's the paradox of trap music. Um, shout out New York Times podcast. They were actually talking about this on their latest episode, where it's rappers have this hard thing where it's like, okay, I'm from this environment, and now I've made it out of this environment. But I made it out of the environment because yeah. of the environment. In like I can't go back, but that's also who I am. It's who you are. It's what you want to talk about. And that's where the danger sets in. And it's 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 I think you're you're exactly right where we're like looking at this. Wow, that's so funny. My friend activity on Spotify. <laughs> My homie is listening to Around Me <laughs> featuring Don Tolliver. Oh, oh, he just transitioned to Metro Spider. I just watched <laughs> it happen. Holy shit. Um, but I think you're exactly right where this album is. That's really what it's about is this duality. And to end it with the takeoff song, yeah, and then the so bonus far. Gunna song, which, by the way, the takeoff verse. Yeah, is so good. Man. Rest in peace. Brother shit, I wanted to fucking cry damn near when I heard it for the first time. Rest in peace, takeoff. Um, and I, and it, one thing we do have to talk about with this album, too, is the fact that Young Thug is on it multiple times, mm -hmm. who is, you know, awaiting trial. Takeoff is on it, mm -hmm. who just recently died, and Gunna also on there who is also facing trial and yeah, a lot of trying times for this um you know this whole scene this group, yeah this, this, yeah the scene that had arised and you know metro i'm sure recorded a lot of this you know months in advance maybe even you know a whole year in advance or whatever and had to have that decision be made right mm -hmm. i'm sure him and his team talked about it do we keep thug on do we keep takeoff on do we change the track list you know yeah. and and I think I think it's important that he kept all of them on. Oh yeah, I think it's very he needs important. Needs a piece of all of them. I mean, Metro is a good enough producer where like all he needs is vocals from them for real, and he'll just go crazy. And I mean, he's worked with all of these guys, yeah, so many times that like he knows what he's doing with their vocals. Yeah. Um, and I, I think one of the last notes I want to make about this album before we we wrap this up is, it is a beautiful evolution to see Metro and 21 Savage from Savage Mode 1 mm -hmm. 
to without warning savage mode two to everything in between and to come here to heroes and villains because i think 21 savage i i would argue is quote unquote the main character yeah. in this right not that he is a character but he has the most appearances on this and every time he appears it feels very like you're locked in you're yeah. paying attention to 21 100%. to recognize the special relationship that they both have and to keep evolving it and to keep um doing it without it seeming stale mm -hmm. i think is a testament to both of them uh in their evolution as artists and i i just love to see it I and they both know it. how much we as fans love them two together totally. and they've never like obviously 21 after savage mode he kind of went on this more like he wanted to show how he could he's not all talking about like streets street mm -hmm. stuff you know murder rap what he would say murder yeah. music but he went on this more conscious path like showing you he can get real introspective and getting his bars off he can go mm -hmm. with the best of them with j cole this and that but then they gave us Savage Mode 2. They gave us not all heroes with capes, and they gave us this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They, they, they continue to feed us, and we're and for that we thank you. <laughs> Man, we are we are full. We are full <laughs> right now. Um, do you have any other comments on this album before before we get out of here? Any conclusions? Not for real. Here? I mean, it's definitely going to be in my album of the year list. I would, I feel like at least I, I I'm gonna keep running it back, but. I'm gonna keep running it back as well, but I do think that this is this has got to be up yeah, there. Yeah, it's up. It's top ten for this sure. This is this is like uh, this is you know when you go to the store and you're looking at all the different steaks and you have that really shitty cut of steak, and then there's the one wagyu A5 yeah. two hundred dollar steak. Yeah, that's what this album is to me. <laughs> it is high grade, high yeah. quality of of the genre of the music like this is this is the the pedestal this is the gold standard right here 21 savage is the steak knife <laughs> <laughs> it's a knife all right well thank you everybody who has listened to this episode how did you all feel about heroes and villains let us know in the comments below um also the beach boys just as a side note have an album called heroes and villains That's uh, fire. and a song called heroes and villains it's pretty good. Check it out. It's pretty good. Check, check it out. <laughs> Welcome back to the Beach Boys podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell us how you feel about heroes and villains in the comments below, or you could DM us on Instagram and Twitter at Soul Serum. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube page, the main page, Please. the TV page. Uh, look, I'm going to tell you what. John just sent us some fucking heat in the group chat, so definitely subscribe to the main page. You don't want to miss that. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. With all of that being said, oh, TikTok, Discord, streams are coming back every Wednesday. Y'all already know what's up. With all of that being said, I, as always, am your host, Clay Bonin. Co-host, Team Mavis. And we'll see y'all next time. Deuces. See ya.